opinion of his election means that there's an awful lot of hope that people in this country as well as in the world can finally start dealing with our humanity rather than superficial things as ethnicity or uh, how much money you may have or not have of all kind of divisions that we may have. So it means that uh, the future look hopeful in spite of it right now <clears throat> not being so. I think what I've always been hoping is that all, whether we're Muslims or other minorities, that we would feel empowered. And I feel that his election once again is calling us to feel that, to become more involved and to see that it's not just that we are a vital part of this country, like, and that we should understand that and behave in the manner that we are equally uh, important. Well, uh, yeah, I did vote in the last election. I did vote for uh, President Obama. Uh, while I didn't agree with, um, with his stand on every single issue, I did feel that he was a much better uh, pick for the presidency than uh, the Republican candidate. And uh, so I guess I wanted to vote for him because it's our right as an American citizen to vote. And while a lot of the majority of people don't really seem to vote, if we don't use our right as a citizen of the United States, then I mean, most, most people, more people vote for American Idol uh, than they do for the presidency, or you know, you don't want that to happen. So I felt that I was just exercising my right as an American citizen, and I just voted for the person who I felt would do the uh, best job. As well, I vote for Obama because I hate to say it, I vote for the Democrats because I dislike them the least of all the two major parties, and. I think he's what we need, although i like to add to what she said, uh, she's a hopeful person and she thinks this is the person we need. I think from what I've seen on TV, Obama can write a good speech for any audience. Uh, he went to Berlin and he gave a speech about tearing down the walls between people. Then the next week he went to Jerusalem and said Israel is our diehard ally, their security is unnegotiable, so we'll see. But if you look at things from a historical perspective, uh, some people, and, and you know there's a diverse population of Muslims uh, in this country. Those that have been here in this country a long period of time and maybe uh, studied the Civil Rights Act of 1865, probably participated in the Civil Rights Movement of 1965 and, and the Act of 1965. Now we see Obama as the president and you look at that uh, historically, you can see the progression, and you can see it as a monumental event. But uh, the people who were involved in the marketing and promotion of the event seem to get the most benefit out of this. Of course, a lot of people were elated that Obama was elected as president and administrator. And, uh, the issues and everything, of course, we now have to look at because that the party is over. So it's, uh, as far as the event is concerned, it is a monumental event, but we still have to, to deal with the realities of what we're facing. I think it was the first inauguration I ever actually watched. Uh, and the reason I wanted to watch it, I, was, uh, I wasn't really even going to think about watching it, but then I realized that this was a, this was a part of history that I was going to be able to witness. So that's why I watched the inauguration. And uh, I remember uh, listening to the news the day before NPR, and they were discussing how usually inauguration speeches are optimistic, and they were wondering how President Obama would, uh, you know, how he would uh, give his speech, because we are, you know, doing really, uh, really bad in this country right now. And so it was surprising that he wasn't too optimistic in his speech. He was, he was actually, uh, he stated what was going on with this country, and then. He did end with hope, you know, because he does believe that we can uh, combat our, all our issues with the economy, uh, with, uh, you know, with all these wars that we're fighting. And so I did appreciate that from him. I did appreciate that the fact that he didn't sugarcoat his speech uh, for the masses, and instead he gave a more truthful account of what the country is to expect. Yes, in spite of millions of people, they said there were at least two million in, at the mall, the fellowship and the type of caring that was shared. The spirit of Washington, D.C. was altogether different. In fact, I wasn't sure it was really Washington, D.C. because of what I saw. 
in spite of the many, many, many people. There was a great sense of goodwill, which is a spiritual thing, and which is something that really impressed. People actually were caring about the welfare of someone else. There wasn't shoving and pushing and, and bickering and things going on. So what we're seeing really is a lot more than words. We're actually seeing something mysteriously happening and probably happening at a pretty good pace here in America. People are wanting to become involved. They are being involved. Uh, there is a difference between government and the people. The American people are a people of goodwill. Our government has steered us in so many different directions. Change is really at the top level only because of the fact that we were being uh, pushed into areas that may not have benefited our country or people as a whole. The inauguration to me was an opportunity that we could renew our intentions to become good citizens of the world as well as good citizens Well, first of all, you know, he has to uh, you know, be given a lot of a praise for actually going on uh, Al Arabiya and not just sticking to uh, the media within the United States or in the Western world in general. Uh, I think the, the Muslim reaction, I mean, once again, it's been, it's been a bit positive. Uh, there's still some reservations because uh, we still, it's still, we're still in a wait and see. Like, he's very optimistic. He's very, uh, he, you know, he says a lot of stuff, nice stuff about, about Muslims. He mentioned Muslims in his inauguration speech. Uh, so, you know, while he does understand the need to work with the Muslim world, we still need to see uh, what becomes of that. Because right now, it's all just words. But the fact that he did put himself out there and say these words is a positive thing. Being a community activist, I appreciate his ability to reach out and, and being willing to reach out and being willing to dialogue. Uh, dealing with the aspect of change. Change already is happening for the fact that we have stated on Arabia that we will become listeners rather than dictators. And I believe that that has been an American arrogant type approach to uh, everything is because we have power. We pretty well tell people what we want them to do and expect them to do it. So his attitude, the change, and the fact that he inspired people to have the same attitude uh, does help to bring about and inspire a change. Leadership is very important. The American problem is an attitude problem. And so until the attitude can change, uh, we can't really expect any one individual to to be responsible for changing everything. Now, of course, Obama can be uh, influential in helping us to get a better understanding of, of leadership and what it what it really means. If in fact he is is qualified for that, uh, thus far and what he has said, it sounds good to a certain degree. But with the reality is we can't just put all of our marbles say, in the, into one basket and say, okay, now that we've got Obama as the president, uh, everything is going to be okay.